We will call the meeting to order at six o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions there? No. Hearing none, <coughs> move to new business. Number one, sign the warning for town meeting. Sarah, want to help us? <laughs> um, so don't look at the um, draft warning that was in the packet. There were some typos um, and there were um, some slight changes. So you have two options, option A and option B in front of you. For everybody out there, there's um, some, a sign out there. Option A is basically what was in the packet. The date was corrected. Um, the officers are now alphabetized. And um, because it's now all Australian ballot and there's not a discussion on the floor and it's always asked on the floor, I added um, in articles 10 through 14, which are the cent and the half cent, it says approximately the amount of dollars so that voters would have um, an, an understanding when they're looking at the ballot that might not have been through the budget process and heard those figures. Just note that they are very approximate because those are based on last year's grand list figures. We won't know what this grand list figures are. Um, so though that's what's changed in option A. Option B is all of those changes, but it breaks down all the ser social service agencies instead of one lump um, figure. It breaks them all down into individual figures uh, and uh, individual articles. That's the only difference between the two. Okay. Mm -hmm. How does the board feel about it? How about you, Don? Uh, we'll go right down through. Yeah, I I guess I'll start with Article 15. Uh, I'm given that we're doing this by Australian ballot this year and given the discussion we've had for many, many years on voting those appropriations as a bundle and that we will not be doing this as a floor vote. I think this is definitely the year to separate them all out and let the, the residents, the voters of Morristown decide which of those appropriations they want to uh, vote for. So. I'm glad that I'm glad we have the opportunity, and it's why you know I, I remember years ago, thirty some years ago, coming to Morristown town meeting, and that was always the article that took forever, took hours to get through some years, and um, it seems like, and that's my understanding of why we lumped them in the first place and put, threw them all in together. I think, given that we're doing this by Australian ballot, this is definitely the year to give the give the voters a chance to to vote the way that they've asked to vote, and perhaps get some feedback after town meeting about how that all went. Yeah, so, one thing about that would be that people can't raise or mm -hmm. or lessen the amount from, like they do from the floor in town meeting. Right. But yeah, but they can't do that with either option. Right. 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 So I'm in favor of option B. Okay. Judy? I'm just curious, like before we couldn't do this, because we didn't, because of, we don't know a charter change or something. So what's different? No, um, you can do it. Your, your policy says that um, you, when somebody does a petition for the first time, it's going to be a standalone article, like you'll see oh, right. 16 right. and 17. Right. And then after that, it's lumped into one big one. Um, but you have it's your policy. You have the power to change it and do however you want. You don't need voter approval to do it either way. My suggestion is if you decide to go with option B, and um, then after we have the special vote to see how we're going to vote on budget articles next year for town meeting, then um, if there's changes made, then we sh should bring this back to you and you should look at your policy and eliminate that one line item if option B is the way that the board thinks they want to go in the future. Okay, thanks for clarifying Yeah, that. it's just because your policy says you're going to do it a certain way. 
Okay. But that's based on us being on a floor vote, not Australian ballot. That policy was written for the floor vote. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. <clears throat> what do you think, Judy? Um, I know that this has been a bone of contention. I'm sorry that we're going to change the policy and the, the uh, groups don't have a chance then to um, necessarily uh, talk, have a chance to talk about it. I mean, all the reports are in the town report about what they do for the town and how they benefit the town. And I will, I will support the board in whichever way they go. Okay. Jess. Um, <clears throat> I hear um, what you're saying, Don, um, in terms of giving the voters um, the opportunity to um, vote um, article by article or, or organization by organization. Um, but what I'm concerned about is maybe the tenor of the, um, of the voters this year in a budget year where um, our budget's up by 30%, um, they decide to um, cut a lot of these programs where th this is such small potatoes, um, for want of a better word, um, in the whole scheme of our budget. Um, it would, <clears throat> I, I would lean more towards having it all as one lump group so that we can um, just continue hopefully to support our social <coughs> services and not uh, inadvertently um, have some of them take the brunt of people's like feelings about the budget in general. Um, so I would vote for um, option A for those okay. reasons. All right, good. Uh, <clears throat> I want to clarify that, that for the folks that might be listening and the total amount for all of these items is $86,969. So that would be the total amount, <clears throat> whether it's separated or lumped together. Which is a what plus percent? the two plus the two new articles, right? Okay. That would be standalone. Which is what, like one percent of our budget? Of an eight million dollar budget? Is that? Am I doing my math right? Less than less, less than one percent. These would be less than one percent of an eight yeah. million dollar budget. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say something? Brian. I myself think we ought to go with A this year. Uh, like I said, we're going to discuss a lot of things about next year. Maybe at that time, somebody can change my mind. But every one of these people went out and got petitions to even be on here at the beginning. You know, they've been, um, I do think too that maybe this year, the way the contention is around, I hate to see some of these people that probably could use this very little bit of money, but it helps them get through. So I'd like to stick with A this year. Okay. And I <clears throat> I agree with Don. I think uh, I've had a lot of people reach out to me about it. And I think uh, I think it would be wise for us, even even in this increase we're seeing, to let the people decide, not not one lump. They can decide on each each article. That's how I feel. It's one but you are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say something first, Tom? Yeah. Uh, can I just ask Tom? Tom? Do we need a motion on this, or is this just? Well, we will. We're just talking about it. We'll okay. need. Okay. We'll need the motion to which one we're going to go for. Uh, to you, to you, Jessica. Uh, the one thing that keep concerned is the attitude of people today, and I'm afraid what's going to happen. If you have it all flung together, it's, they're all going to get wiped out. Mm -hmm. That's how the attitude I'm getting from the people. Mm -hmm. They're so going to cut everything they can possibly cut. Mm -hmm. That would mean every single one of those things. Right. Now, where if each one had their opportunity at it, then, then you know I'm not going to say the past, but they, I think they would have a better past individually looking at the, at the, the at the vote. That's just my feeling. Thanks, Thank Tom. You. Uh, Tony, then Laura. I just want to remind folks to come to the microphone and speak clearly and identify yourself and where you're from. Tony, Cody, Cody Hill, and I guess Tom and I are going to disagree on this because I think all these appropriations here should be cut out entirely this year because the nation is under, the, the whole nation is, is feeling it. Now, if these people can't do without 
whatever they're getting, eighty-six thousand dollars or whatever. They need to go raise it on their own. <coughs> Period. Thanks, Tony. Laura. Laura Straits. Um, I. This has been uh, an issue of mine for years, <laughs> um, having tried to get appropriations petition, and I can say I had a huge amount of pushback for the farmer's market because we are very small, and most of the comments I got were no, no more appropriations, even though they loved us, it, it was a matter of it was getting too big. The other comment that was interesting to me was it wasn't so much the appropriations um, that are being voted on. It was the fact that they could go to town meeting and 150 people all of a sudden could issue an additional 5,000, 10,000. And then they were upset because they were like, we thought that organization was getting 2,000. Now they're getting 15,000. Um, so, you know, that goes into it. But I also think I've spent most of my life in not-for-profit and Part of not-for-profits is raising money. And I have personally, in my experience, I write grants all the time. I've never seen a one-stop shopping. You put it in once and you get it for the rest of your life. That's not how grants work. Um, all of these organizations will tell you that. Part of writing grants is a yearly process and development. That's part of it. Um, and in this case, with this going forward, um, they still have a month to, to put some energy out there, which will actually benefit all of us if they put a little more energy into saying, you know, because I've been doing with the farmer's market, I've gotten a lot more people following me, um, and doing more informational so people will appreciate and understand what they're doing and then very possibly get behind them. But the fact that most of the people read through these, they have no idea who they are, um, don't have time to go or the ability to do the digital research. So, um, and in talking with everybody, everyone is feeling very um, stressed, highly stressed because of money and everything, and feeling like they do not have any control. And if you look at psychologically coming out of the pandemic, that has a lot to do with it. Um, and so I agree with Tony that I think you risk just if you put, uh, force them into all or nothing, you're very likely going to get nothing. Thank you. I do. I do remember. This is years ago now, but I remember at town meetings, there was um, a couple more organizations that were on this list that didn't even operate in our area anymore, and we were giving them an appropriation, and that raised a lot of questions. I remember that was probably ten years ago. Remember, remember that, Brian? And so then we then we said, you know, whoever wants to get an appropriation has to either show up, um, come talk to us before. Here. Yeah, come talk to us before. Point of order. Yeah. Point of order, please. They either are going to show up here beforehand and tell us, you know, give them background of why they need the money, what to use it for, or be at town meeting. And that's been pretty successful. And I think we've vetted all of these groups now. Um, but I still, I still believe in um, letting people decide. Option B, what you done? So, do you, David, do you have something to say? I guess I'm kind of David Ring. Thanks. I'm a little confused with some of this, and maybe I could get some explanations of this uh, from the board. Uh, first of all, this was handed out, and I guess now it's not even relevant. Right. But that's the only thing I had to review at the time until I, I saw what's out there. Same with us. We didn't and see these so, until we got here tonight. Um, that's exactly what I want to talk about. One of the things is that um, I'm a little amazed because uh, I've got some issues with some of the wording in this, and I just took a quick look out there at options A and B, and some of the words are virtually the same. Uh, what I've noticed, I guess, is that the way you've structured it as far as voting on the dollar amounts is different. Um, and that's what the difference between A and B, primarily. 
But are we tonight going to discuss some of the words in here, uh, which I guess are out there? Because I've got some definite problems with some of the words that are in here with each one of the articles. So are we going to go through each one of these articles and discuss the articles one by one so that we can either decide on A or B and revise some of the words so that the next time it gets put out? Or what are you guys going to actually vote on tonight? We're going to vote which option we're going to go with. I don't believe we need to go through them item by item. Well, and Sarah explained that this option A is right. everything lumped together and option B is everything so, separate. Okay, then let's take a look at option, article number seven. Okay, just pull that one. I don't care, either one, A or B. Seven. All right. Yeah. Now, if I was a voter and I saw that shall the voters establish a reserve fund to be called the unallocated reserve fund to replace, okay? So, wow, all of a sudden, the town runs out of money. They got a $8.9 million fund. So, you're going to say, if you vote this up, that you're gonna replace the whole fund of $9 million with 10% of last year's operating fund budget, and you're going to run this town on that? No, that word needs to be say supplement, because if all of a sudden something happens, you're going to supplement that, hopefully with 10%, so that you can keep your people paid and plow on the streets and stuff, and running this town until whatever happens, you know, changes. You know, that, this is the problem. I've got some wording issues here. Is that written different than the previous ones? This, is a, this article is written to clarify, this is from Jim Barlow, our municipal law attorney. Uh, it is the way we have been doing business right along, except that we no longer have to separate the highway funds from the general government funds. So it's renaming the unallocated reserve fund. That will be the, the new name with our approval it's the same way we've been conducting business. And, and these are the unallocated reserves that they are in the event. Typically what happens is during an environmental event. So during the Halloween storm of, of uh, 19, there was unallocated reserves that were there. That way we didn't use our, our highway budget to try and make all the repairs. We had the unallocated reserves there such that we could continue with our highway function throughout the year without interrupting that, that source of money. The only allocated reserves are there, and then we wait for the FEMA. Re it was a FEMA event, so then we wait for the FEMA reimbursement money to come back in to go back in the reserve. So there are two current you, funds you, that we have that are what the law changed, and the law now is that we just have one fund instead of two. Right. So stuff. So no, nothing. It really isn't. This isn't money based at all. And it, I, I agree. I think the language is confusing. I mentioned that to Tina, but I think we're getting information from a lawyer saying this is the way we have to word it mm -hmm. uh, is there any way we could put in parentheses on it what what it means sarah do you know you could add the word shall the voters establish a combined reserve fund to be called the unallocated reserve fund just add the word combined would that clarify it a little bit no that's not my only problem i've got right. kind of other issues about this mm -hmm. um that's just okay. So there's That's no, aside. So there's right. no money. There's no money there for that. You, you understand that, right? There's no money there. No, it, it, this doesn't have anything to do with money per se. It's, so it's combining two, two uh, funds. Say if there's leftover money at the end of the year that money that's left over from the general fund would go into this reserve fund. But money only goes into the reserve fund if there's money left over. Un unallocated funds. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because that's one of the other questions I've got here is like you were vote you vote on um, article number ten. It says uh, how how is article nine dealt with if or how is article fourteen dealt with if article ten is voted if article nine is voted down? It says shall the voters establish a reserve fund. Okay. So if you vote number nine down and say nope, we're not going to establish a reserve fund. That's Gone history. All right. Then what are you going to do with with uh, Article 14 
to uh, because the, the current you've got a current reserve fund and, you, and you're, you're authorizing raising taxes to be dedicated to the Vermont to the to bridge and highway reserve fund. So, for example, you don't establish it in number nine, you vote it down. Then number 14, you're going to authorize taxes of a half a percent to be dedicated to the fund that doesn't exist. If I can explain number nine is, a, is another clarification. This is again from Jim Barlow. Yeah. Is that the, it's, a, it's getting voter approval for the naming of the fund. We've, we've done this, uh, this amount of money into the bridge reserve fund every year uh, for the down. Um, this is number nine is simply to the voters vote the it's the it's the naming by the voters of this fund. They're recognizing that the fund exists. Right. I understand but David's point. If, if all of a sudden right. when everybody gets all hot and bothered about this and they pay pay Tom say say, well, no, we're done. We're not we're not gonna do anything. We're looking, you know, no, nope, can't have any of this stuff. No, 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 no. Well, what's gonna happen to this? Would it be better to call it to say, should the voters approve renaming or naming a reserve fund, an existing reserve fund? I mean, or is that we can't say that because of the legal? Well, the language system. itself is is there purposely to the, for the voters to give permission for this fund to exist. Mm -hmm. we, we've had this fund for a long time. This oh. was Jim Barlow's read saying, if the voters didn't vote to authorize the fund itself, you need to have that wording like this to basically the voters are saying yes this fund is okay so i'm wondering sarah these are clarification okay. articles are we on, are we allowed to put anything on the um the ballot i will call about um to kind of explain or that's why you're going to have an information okay hearing. so right. that's so this right kind of, because... i'm kind of caught on the dilemma here of we have to follow wording a certain way and i understand the confusion it, it brings so if we have an informational meeting we can address those concerns at that time too that's true yeah there's a lot of confusion in this thing to me looking at the first time and now i come to this meeting and i say two more out there a and b which even makes it more confusing well but, have you seen these before these no i have had exactly the same. i want to advise the board just because of what i've seen here is that the more voting that you can give us folks, the better. And I would rather vote to, I'm not that I'm against any or for any of these other $86,969 agencies. But if, if I have to start voting yes or no, I'm gonna be able to have all my choices rather than, because I'd hate to say no to 86,000 and whack out all. Yeah. If I like one of them, and I don't like the dog one, but I do like uh, uh, River Arts and I do like you know a few of these okay. rather than whack them all. All so, right, thanks all right. David. Come on up here, Tom. I got one more. Uh, just an observation here. Uh, last week we had the lawyers got involved and the Rooney's kind of took a hit on it pretty bad from the wording of the lawyers. This is this seems like the same thing. Well, I understand you have a like an obligation to be correct and you don't want to be sued and all that other stuff. But why can't we take this law, whatever this lawyer says? and put it into language that we understand. Uh, I don't understand half those wordings in there. I mean, that doesn't mean anything, but if it was in, I'm not use lawyer speak, maybe it would help everybody out. This is all good for all of us, I mm -hmm. understand that. But I think clarity is gonna be a big issue here. And I, I mean, is it is it within the realm of possibility to put um, layman's terms in brackets or something. It's, I mean, I, I've had the same issue when I'm voting myself. I, I don't know. And they're, they're not written by the attorney. They're written by the LCT and they're written uh, by the law that right. we have. Right. Yeah. That we have to do them this way. Well, this I think is how all towns vote on them. Yeah. It's the same language that's yeah. used everywhere. I think what you're saying, or like what Judy's saying, you know, we, we do it correctly to what the law says, and then the informational meeting, we can explain what each article is. Yeah. This is That'll be the time. Oh, well, yes, this happens. You vote no, this happens. This is a downfall. You get more participation by Australian <clears throat> ballot, but you. you lose the discussion yes. to explain yeah. Yeah. the questions. I'm just worried that a lot of people won't attend an informational meeting because of whatever reason they will get the ballot and they'll be like, 
that it, it is gonna be I don't get it. it's gonna be on the video. They can take your time to do that. I and you make sure it's in the newspaper. Right. I'm just saying that I mean I you know I teach kids all day long, you know, you you're, you're a teacher. I mean, people don't have the patience for this kind of reading. I mean they, they I don't. don't. I, don't I I mean, or understand it. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I think you all bring up a good point. Go ahead, bro. First you, then Laura. If, yeah, introduce yourself. And... Yeah. Uh, Travis Sabatasso. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be possible for the board to put together like a summary worksheet that sort of explains these articles in layman's terms separate from the town meeting morning? Something that could be shared in advance of the informational meeting so people can have it in hand. We could have it at the informational meeting. I don't know if it's beforehand, but we could I think get it would be helpful if people could review it in advance it would. of the meeting. Um, and it, it's something we put in the newspaper too. So yeah. I took a DLC training this week with yeah, the attorneys, so. and they were very hesitant about um, towns have got sued, so you can't do it. They don't recommend it, that you mail it to everybody, and they don't recommend that you do anything that would cost any taxpayer dollars that would seem like you were campaigning for it, but that you could draft something that was very, um, just make you got to make sure it's very factual. Mm -hmm. um, no opinions whatsoever, right. but like posting on your website or something like that that wouldn't cost money. So, for that example, okay. the one that that David was talking about, number seven, because it's not anything. That, it's not a cost. It's not going to cost the taxpayers anything. It's just renaming the fund, right. voting. If could we put in something like voting yes allows the town to rename the fund. Does that give them, or this is just a renaming the fund article? Yeah, I think a summary is a great idea to have that. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, while I'm up here, I had just a question on the budget figure in the town meeting morning. I believe it reads 10,106,209. Um, I just crunched some quick numbers on the budget proposal on the website for the general government, police, fire, EMS, and highway totals. And I came up to 9,916,213, which is about 190,000 less than what's in the town meeting morning. Just wondering what that discrepancy was caused by. Do you know what that is? Right? I know that answer. You do? I asked myself because I crunched the numbers to double okay. check. So it's paving, and I don't understand, but we always let me get Does anybody okay. have their budget book? Yes. yes, I do. I asked. That's why I know this answer. I just need to know. I just need this page. So. <laughs> Paving on the budget overview, there's the general police fire, fire, EMS highway, and then there's always been paving and sand and gravel are listed below. I think just because it's come up so many times at town meeting, how many, to, how much money is being paved, uh, spent for paving and sand and gravel instead of lumping it into the highway budget, um, it was listed separate. So that voters could really see how much. Are there sand lines in the highway budget as well, or winter operations? I don't, I don't know much about the highway budget. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Laura, you had a question. Because <clears throat> I thought I saved this number and I didn't know. Just a clarification as uh, if you do indeed go with a, um, because in the past, I know we had the. Um, on the vote was uh, uh, regarding um, <clears throat> should we have one name or two names Mooresville and Morristown and that was a non-binding um, which people didn't understand that term um, so going forward with A if I'm assuming that um, and this is for my own information also is that it would go as any vote if it's over 50% it passes if it's under 50% it doesn't pass so that's what I'm asking is Anything that's binding, yes, majority. Yeah. Majority, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but two questions on Zoom. One of them is from Jamie. Okay. Jamie. Good evening. Um, I'm just curious. I only have the uh, original uh, packet that, that was sent out, uh, which has a date of the 27th for the informational meeting. Um, can you tell me what the date of the informational meeting is going to be in the packet that you have? What has been changed to? February 27th. 
February 27th? It, February instead of January. February 27th. So how, how long is that before? That's 28. That's about a week beforehand, before the vote? You have to hold the informational hearing within 10 days of that okay. annual meeting by statute. Okay. Great. Thank you. Another question? Yeah, yeah Carl. Um, Kathy. Go ahead, Kathy. Oh, hi. Good evening. Um, just a couple of questions um, about our payroll um where who, where did you get the new pay scale from or who made up where did that new pay scale come from kathy we're not talking about budget here tonight we're talking about option a or b for the town warning this is not a budget session okay well i was just I, i'm not just discussing money really i just um and then okay so i guess i'll call eric and ask him this week thank you yeah that'd be great thanks david <clears throat> david ring i still have some questions regarding you know you're going to vote on a or b tonight but um are you at this this informational meeting I'm um, going to have numbers like, for example, if I wanted to sit down when I got time at home and figure out what this might do to my taxes, uh, line by line, um, yeah, I'm still confused because, not, like Article Number Eight, you've got a uh, deposit, a nine hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars, almost almost a million dollars from a former ARPA funds. To, re to fund this reserve fund, but I'd like to see a number of what is the value or the number of the ARPA fund. What is it? What's it worth? What are you put putting to it or taking away? That's one thing. And then, um, you know, you're talking about Article 9, deposit approximately $307,000 from the, quote, current br bridge account to fund this reserve fund. Well, what's the current bridge account fund worth that you're trying to fund more or less so are we going to see some real numbers that that dollar amount is what's in the fund this that article line is about renaming it the voters getting approval to rename that fund and identify the fund and that's the amount that, that dollar amount in there is what's in currently in the fund and, okay and david it says approximately because there could be more interest right and so that was the those were all of those uh, figures there um amounts <clears throat> as of the date that this was written in those accounts so that nine hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars is what the actual ARPA fund is worth. You're just renaming. It's so it's no longer it's no longer ARPA money. ARPA was the the Americans Recovery Plan that came the federal money that came to us and all the municipalities across the country. Right. So the money came to us as ARPA funding with a set of rules uh, for how you could spend it. And this, the rules were extremely broad, and that, that is putting it lightly. Uh -huh. There was so much pushback from municipalities across the country about what could they actually spend the money on. You know, we have this, this is the project we want to do. Can we spend it on this? Because nobody wanted to spend it improperly and then have to pay it back. Right. So there was a big fear about if I spend it wrong, I got to pay it back, then, I mean, it really is a waste. So, the federal government last April gave us a one-time opportunity to, and there's no other way to put this, folks, but to launder the money. They allowed us to take the money we got from ARPA, inject it into this year's FY23's budget as a replacement, and we replaced the police and emergency uh, emergency management, uh, excuse me, Morristown Emergency Medical Services salary line. So. The ARPA money goes in, the tax dollars that are there to pay for that line item come out in the equal amount and now go to this fund. Now they're no longer ARPA money, it's taxpayer dollars in this fund, and we no longer have to follow the broad rules that the federal government passed down. They, were, they, they couldn't figure out how to answer all the questions, so they gave us a way to put it into our budgets and then take the tax dollars out to create a tax dollar fund. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what my whole point was leading to was how do I sit down with a calculator and take your 8.6 or 10.1 million dollar number and then apply all these other ones to that because 
is very confusing uh, when Article 14, you want to raise another half a percent of the grand list, or I don't know how much what that number is because it wasn't published in this one. It might be in number uh, in blue and number two or B or whatever that is, purple. It might be in there now, but I don't know what it was. But I'd like to be able to understand this before I vote on it as to how and what each one of these is going to add or take away from it. Well, it's, I mean, we've talked about this at budget meetings before. I mean, we have to figure out, what we have to figure out is the amount of your taxes that is actually the municipal budget. And it's pretty, it's, what did you say? Was it 15%? No, about 40. No. 40. 40%. 40. <clears throat> okay, so 40%, sorry. So 40% of your taxes are this. So um, this budget. And the rest is um, state. The school. State school. Taxes, school education. Education. Right, but still. So this doesn't have anything to do with school. No, no, no. Where does yeah. that come in? School is totally separate. Yeah, yeah, no. Separate meeting. Besides this, so yeah, correct. totally separate. So forty percent of your taxes will increase thirty percent. No, hmm. no, they won't increase. Your taxes aren't going to increise thirty percent. No, no, no. What you said is right. Forty percent of your taxes. <laughs> no. No. The, the portion of the, the okay let me okay. explain that you're, you're going down a slippery slope yes. well i know but it's just this does clear it up i actually did did all this myself we're not like giving you exact numbers but if you want yeah. to start like conceptualizing something something yeah, i gotta conceptualize something yeah. I right. look at my tax yeah. bill I, yeah that's what we're talking about so well i kept i keep getting these phone calls and <clears throat> all this stuff about taxes and the portion this year is roughly 60 40. The, schools, the school part of your property tax bill is 60%. Right. Okay. That, that figure, percentage wise, I actually called the Andy Lundin mm -hmm. from the superintendent's office. He said it's about 5.8% increase on that side. Mm -hmm. So if you figure that out, you'll know how much you're going to increase on the school side. And then on the town side, it is around 30%, give or take which is 40% of your property tax bill. So if you take those two figures, mm -hmm. it ends up being about 15% increase. Um, don't call me on that exactly. That's total. That's total. I did, I actually but did everything. That, I, I was gonna say that. I, that doesn't take into consideration right. the grand list, which is gonna change it, the reappraisal, which is gonna change it, and the tax rate, which is gonna change it. Yeah. So. I was just doing a ballpark, and for me, I pay a thousand a month right now. So it's about one hundred and sixty dollars more a month, without those considerations. So the fact when you say thirty percent, I see on front porch form thirty percent, thirty percent. People are calling me saying, you know, it's not thirty percent. It may very well be twelve to fifteen percent when all is said and done. It might not be like our green list last year. Um, it gained a percent and a half. Which helped us. We were at twelve point seven, and it knocked it down to nine point something. Nine point nine. Nine point nine. And this year, there's a good chance it's going to be over two percent because we've had so much growth and so so many of these new apartments. So that's going to help us even more. Um, a lot of people are scared to death of the reappraisal, but that doesn't mean your taxes are going to go up. Your appraisal will, but the tax rate will go down. And I think all in all, we're going to be somewhere around twelve to fifteen percent. I actually. I took my son who's a mathematician, like he's like, he got the perfect score on SAT math, you know, and he went through all these scenarios and he came up with about 12%. Now that's without these considerations. So it's still a lot, it's still, it's yeah. still not a small amount of money. I don't want to pay $160 more a month, you know, that's what I'm paying, paying a thousand now, I don't want to pay 160 more, but. A month, you said, right? Yeah, a month. Yeah, most people don't see that. Right. Not a year, a month. Right, but I'm just saying this is what I, for myself, my God personal you. situation, you know, but that gives an idea, and it's not thirty percent. Thirty percent would be a crazy figure. Mm -hmm. So you're saying twelve? You're thinking twelve to fifteen percent? Yeah. That's just uh, my guess. And the school, if you're told. Yes, that's it's both. A, it's a guess. It's, it's a, a guess. guess. It's a guess. Still, Don't it's a guess. On it. yeah. <laughs> right, but that's that's my guess because I wanted to know too. Yeah. But it's not going to be thirty percent more your tax bill, you know. My tax bill might be fifteen hundred more or eighteen hundred more. Nineteen twenty. Yeah. I, nice. Right. So, but so, we don't know. We, we that the tax rate may be lower. It may help us. The reappraisal may help us. We know that the grand list is going to help us. 
Those things will bring it down. It'll help you for three years, and then all of a sudden, no, we'll see. But anyway, that's my two cents. So you're voting tonight on to which one of these? Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, the point of this meeting was really to approve the warning. And well, I think we're ready now to have uh, an, motion. a motion. Yeah. Okay, I'll like, no. we'll turn it over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your question. I'd like to make the motion that we adopt plan option B for the warning for the town of Morristown's annual town meeting, March 7th, 2023. Okay, I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? Give me a minute. No pressure. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Nay. The ayes have it. Option B is going to be this town. town. I'm a lame, it's, it's a lame duck. So, <laughs> yeah. so I need you to actually sign. Yeah. Okay. The, sign the, the, the one that he has? All right. And do we sign it even if we didn't vote for it? You can just put reluctantly in press this. <laughs> yeah. Really? So then we'll go next. We're going to do number two approve authorizing the school board to mailing of the annual school budget. So you guys already approved to mail all active voters their town meeting budget. The um, law changed in the select board. Excuse. In the um, select board is the one that authorizes whether or not the school can mail all of their ballots. Um, I believe that the school, if we're going to mail all the town ballots, would like to mail all the school ones with us. So, um, well, is there going to be some help? They have helped, and actually, then I bill them. Part all right. Too. Nice. <laughs> Split well, costs with them. Doesn't matter really. <laughs> right. So you need a motion mm -hmm. to allow them, the school board, to mail. Them. I make um, along with ours. Is that what the motion is? Mm -hmm. I make a motion that um, we, the town of Morristown, or Morrisville, allows um, allows the school board to mail their ballots along with um, the um, the town um, the town ballots. <laughs> Thank you. Second. Sort of. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further further discussion on it? I have another question about it. Not, not I've forgotten. Um, on this yeah this oh did they so i know when we send our ballots out it's like three and the ballot and two envelopes or three envelopes is it the same for the school they have as many envelopes then too yeah um the laws changed and we can combine stuff i used to have okay. to mail everything separate and i think um elections re-looked and re-examined once all these H42s and all these, all of a sudden we were mailing everybody ballots versus before I'd mail like 50. Um, now when I'm mailing 4,000, they said, yeah, you can mail them together. So yeah. this is, okay. it's new. But is it going to cost the town more money then? Because we have more weight? I charge, I charge this, I split, oh, this I school. split it in okay. half with the school. That's so it's, it's to your yeah. advantage to yeah. allow I mean, them to it's do coming it. out of all of our pockets. Yeah. So it really is. You don't do it. You don't do it. Sixty forty. Sixty forty. All right. Any further discussion on this no. motion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. All right. Is that all the business we have? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Don. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now adjourned. Right.